you can see that I have made a loop beam. Now this stuff is very, very flexible. You can see that I can just take this and bend it with my hand with no trouble at all. Like I'm bending that into a loop without much force. So this stuff is really good. And before I get into talking about this loop, I want to actually talk about the motivation behind um, making this antenna. Now the first um, antenna that I have is here in the room. It is a vertical antenna cut for 10 meters. Now while this antenna works, um, I'm not really a fan of it just because I have to take this outside and bring it back in whenever it, um, I'm done using it because if I don't this thing will blow over and fall onto the ground. So I'm trying to uh, avoid that and my other antennas include there we go you can probably see on the screen that this here this is a well this is a section of PVC um, that is roughly six seven feet tall and then on top of that is a fiberglass fishing rod that you can get off eBay for like ten dollars that's about ten feet um, and that antenna was to be a uh, vertical, and it was going to be loaded vertical for 40 meters. Except the issue was that it received perfectly fine. Like the first thing I heard about that was um, uh, some stations calling from California and Washington, uh, which is very, very far from here. I'm in uh, Chicago, by the way, so that's across the country. But the issue is I, I can't seem to get that to tune up for transmit, which is very odd. So this still is laying outside on my floor and I'm going to convert that into probably something like a, a 10 meter vertical or something to replace this uh, vertical over here. Um, and you can also see on the side that I have a coax running up this wall right there and this actually fans out to be a dipole on both sides of the wall. Now this dipole is cut for 40 meters, except it resonates on 9 megahertz, uh, which is not particularly useful. <laughs> so I think half the effect is because it's right up against the wall. I don't know what that does to it, but I've read in a report up in uh, UHF and VHF that having stuff against a wall um, is supposed to decrease your frequency that it's resonant at. Um, I don't know how that relates to this, but maybe because the wavelength is so long and the gap is so tiny that it just makes everything funny. Um, also, this antenna is uh, strangely directional because this side over there is east and this side is west off this side. And I can hear virtually nothing on the west side at all, ever. Um, I might have made one or two contacts out in California when I got really, really lucky. Uh, during the K3Y event at the beginning of the year. Um, but generally, I don't get any signals from the West Coast. But what I do get is a whole ton of signals from New York, Carolinas, and up in like New Hampshire and states over in the East. So definitely, this is something strange where I'm kind of pointing only towards the East. And so this I want to solve uh, by making a directional antenna that I can turn around, which is this magnetic loop antenna that I'm about to make. Now, here's the bottom of the uh, vertical that I have outside with the fishing pole, and it just sticks into the ground. You can see right there, there's like a hole that used to be a fence pole uh, mount, I guess, and it just sticks into there and it stands up vertically. And the other problem with my dipole, which you can see running right here, and here's the insulator, and there's the end of it. This is just string attached to a TV antenna over here. Um, whoops, over there. Um, and you can see that it's maybe, you know, 10 feet away from my power lines. Uh, so that's not a very good situation. And I want to probably take this down pretty soon. This has actually survived a winter and a half and it survived the summer. Um, with no, no problems at all. I do disconnect it during storms and stuff like that. But I don't think that's very safe to have a power line in your antenna right there. 
And plus, I get a whole ton of interference from the power line. Now, I don't know if it's a power line or airplanes flying overhead, but it, you get this weird noise in the radio as it goes, kind of just like that. And it lasts for like two minutes uh, before it goes away. And then it's kind of sporadic, so you never can figure out what the cause is either. Maybe the power line is it, but here's a view of a uh, antenna just standing up. But anyhow, back to the magnetic loop. So here we go. Here is a loop. It is roughly from this side all the way over there. It's about three feet. It's a little bit bigger. This whole circumference is actually ten feet and I think ten inches or something like that. I measured it. Um, so that gives you a diameter of roughly three feet, which is what a lot of standard uh, uh, magnetic loops seem to be for two, for uh, 20 meters or 40 meters or something like that. Um, so there's the loop, and the other part of the antenna is on the ground. Here's the inner, uh, I guess, coupling loop, you could call it. Now this is just the same stuff, except on the end I have attached a coax and I've split the braid off to one side and the center connector off to one side and I kind of just stuck that inside the tube and bashed it with a hammer so it's kind of crimped and then I soldered the ends with a high power soldering gun and now this is pretty sturdy and you notice that I have a ton of coax attached to this um, this was originally on this antenna over there and until I get this to tune up I'm gonna not worry about the coax so much so I'm gonna hook this up eventually and we're gonna do some testing next video um but for now you can see that i have a ton of uh actually radio shack stuff like this is antenna rotator cable that i have like another pile of right over there and oh by the way there's the coil for my uh vertical but i have a pile of this stuff because uh when radio shack uh declared bankruptcy like maybe a year or two ago um, their stores were just closing and they were literally throwing stuff out the window, so I was able to get into Radio Shack and uh, essentially buy a ton of their stuff for a very, very low cost. And now I just have like piles of those stuff and I've got a bunch of connectors and fuses and just all sorts of electronics. And they were giving it away for like $5 for a humongous bag. So, yeah, now I have a ton of that, but now that's really, really useful because... Um, this is going to be the cable that runs my motor power over to the uh, capacitor setup. So you can see over here that I have the motor attached um, to this capacitor now. Now this is still a little bit kind of not an angle because I didn't tighten it down yet, but this was a really snug fit. I ended up putting electrical tape on this also, and that just barely jammed into um, this coupler here. So I'm planning to actually put the screw in and screw that down soon. Um, but right now I'm just in testing and this works. Um, at the end, you can see the motor. I've just attached two of the three conductors to the motor. And this just runs down the cable over there through the mess and comes back up this other side into my power supply. I'm going to turn it on and you can watch. Um, I think spin and I might have picked a bad motor for this like this spun a lot faster than I remembered it to be but essentially this will turn the motor and if I hold on to the motor the capacitor should turn so I'm going to do a quick demonstration of that so for this I have to actually hold on to the motor because or else the motor is going to spin and the whole spindle is not going to spin and if I hold on to this and then I turn this on. You can see that just spinning. Right. So that works perfectly fine. Maybe I'll switch to a stepper motor because I'll be able to tell to turn to a specific location, to tune to a certain band, and it'll remember it. Um, and by the way, I bought a bunch of these things. Raspberry Pi Zero, so I can actually hook up a Wi-Fi card to this and just put this thing outside. It's a microcontroller, if you've never seen these before. But I can just attach it to the capacitor, hook it up outside, put a Wi-Fi card on there, 
and I could remotely control it over the internet to turn my capacitor to a certain angle. So that's the benefit of using a stepper motor or the DC motor. And the stepper motor is one that you, know, you find pretty standard with a bunch of Arduinos and stuff like that. It's one of these, uh, so it focuses. It's like a, it says 28BYJ-48 stepper motor. And these are very cheap on eBay. They're maybe a dollar and something if you want to wait a month for shipping. So, you get one of those. I might try this if that one doesn't behave. But, for now, that's going to be that. Um, next thing I'm going to do is probably uh, figure out how to get that capacitor onto this pole. Because I'm just going to reuse this uh, vertical antenna to be my mount for this loop. Um, so, the optimal distance is supposed to be, you know, um, I think it's one loop length or two, two loop lengths above the ground. So I'm just going to put like a block of wood and maybe zip tie it onto there or something for testing. And then, uh, we'll work from there. So I'm going to get this hooked up and I'll be right back. Okay, so maybe I can get this on camera. But I'm going to right now uh, put the wires through the loop. And so I've uh, stripped back a good length of this wire. And there's somehow different thicknesses, which is interesting. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to attach one to one side and another wire to the other side. And I'm going to start by putting it alongside... And I'm just in there. So, you see that? There, just put a whole length of that in there. I'm gonna probably just take a hammer and go. Like that to it. And then I'm gonna take the other side. And do the same. And now we can also solder it with this. And I think that we have some flux. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that side first. This takes a couple seconds to warm up. Okay, well, this isn't very good. Um, the tip broke. You see it's in kind of two pieces, so it's not actually conducting anymore. So this will no longer do any soldering. We have to move on to plan B. Again. Um, I'm going to clean off this flux bit of water. You see, this, this side's okay, I guess. It's better than nothing, but this side, maybe if I give it a couple good whacks and Maybe some more tape. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tape this thing down, I guess. There's nothing better I can do about it. That's that. Um, I hope this works. Okay, so this assembly took literally five minutes. That's all it took. Um, so I'm going to start on the bottom. Over here, I probably want to put another zip tie, but this essentially is just zip tied to the PVC pipe. And I have a zip tie down here for the coax. And, I mean, it stays on. You could actually move this up and down because the zip tie isn't all that tight. But if you follow it up to the top, you see that I have a capacitor just tied on by one of the rods 
onto your places and it isn't going to move. <laughs> and then atop the loop, I have one a little bit lower than the other, which is which should be fine. It should be a big deal. Um, and then I just zip tied the end of that to my pipe. And I left this. This is extra long. I don't know how it's going to affect the antenna performance, but it's extra long because when I spin these plates, you know, that wire can just follow it, so I'm not going to have any, like, rotating friction or, like, contact issues. It's just going to be solid wire that's connected, and the wire turns with the rotor plates. So I'm probably going to plug this in into my radio and see how it works. Okay, I think I'm going to end here with the uh, measurements because I never gave it to you for the capacitor, actually. So, starting at top, we have, I put about an inch of a gap down there. Um, and the whole diameter of this thing is 37 and a half inches or so. And then this uh, loop diameter is roughly 7 and a half, 8 inches. And then the capacitor, I have measurements here. So the plate or the rectangle on the bottom is 7 by 5, and then the round pieces are 6 by 4. It's 6, it should be 6 by 3 for a semicircle, but since the bottom part I kind of expanded it out a little bit, it's 6 by 4, so I could drill a hole in there and still have some space to turn. And then for the number of plates, I have. Let me check. Um, 10 round pieces and 11 rectangle pieces. So that should be all you need to replicate what I have there. Um, I don't know if this works yet, so we will check that out next video.